been that way since the get go. It's been that way since the get go. It's been that way since the get go. Lord, it's always been that way. Woman shined the apple and the man had to take it by. Anything that good God knows just had to be right. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Mark DiCarlo. Tonight my guest is Homer Villarreal. Homer has been a kind of a community activist, has had several newspapers through the year. The El Defense are the most notable one. Thanks for coming on, Homer. Oh, it's an honor to be here, Mark, as always. So. Well, thank you. So they had to go to the end of the world to anoint a new pope. <laughs> That's what um, um, our new pope, Pope Francis I, I think his name is, uh, was it... Um, um, Jose, Jorge Mario Bergoglia stated. Why do you think that was? I I think that the um, the t it reflects the times for them to uh, make such a radical move in an uh, institution that has been uh, uh, pretty much uh, centered around the uh, European, um, um, uh, you know. Uh, now Germanic uh, areas, um, I, I think moving to this, uh, the, the lower western part of the world, um, I mean, South America um, means a lot. I think that um, uh, maybe there's a movement within the church, and I think uh, it's been out there, uh, pointed out that uh, maybe the, the, the church has become too provincial, um, uh, and it's, uh, uh, of course, the criticism. Have you been keeping up with the criticism of the uh, Vatican Bank and uh, how uh, they want so, to remove? Somewhat. It's rather complicated, of course. And there's a there's a book by, um, was it the valet of uh, Pope Benedict that came out? And there was papers, and he was prosecuted. I believe he got yeah. 18 months in prison, and then... Um, and, and and then there was, I, I, and then there's several several yes. other books about it. Um, and, and perhaps that feeds into why um, Pope Francis I has now stated that he had to go to the end of the world. Perhaps the Vatican banking scandal, together with the uh, pedophilia scandals, yeah. um, as recently represented popularly in the United States in this HBO special, had something to do with um, going to the end, uh, perhaps sarcastically, going to the end of the world. Well, I think going to the end of the world um, um, is a clue. I think it, it uh, this is like peeling an onion here today, but it's telling us that the, um, the church, Catholic, of course, means universal, if, if I'm correct. Um, and, and, and universal means a, a, a universal... Um, uh, a missionary movement and um, the criticism of the Vatican Bank basically was that it was too um, focalized in the um, uh, the Italian community. It had not a, 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 I think the the Orthodox banking systems of the world sort of isolated them and want to remove them from. Uh, but but basically, what uh, as I recall, uh, I think even some of the money was being used to finance uh, Italian politicians or something. Yes, yes, they had to bring in um, some uh, German aristocrat, uh, um, uh, you know, toward the administration of the last pope. Did, did that, you personally um, find these uh, banking scandals, the Vatican banking scandals, which you've read? Did you find them very extraordinary or striking? Well, internally, it exploded because um, uh, the the funding that uh, bankrolls the the church, which is uh, money's channeled. You got you got to keep in mind uh, uh, the, the church. Sometimes we don't like to think of the church as a big corporation. Uh, you know, with people that that contribute uh, large amounts of monies, and you know, we like to see it more as um, you know something ordained by. Um, by larger forces, but in the everyday workings of man, and I think religion has to, we got to look at those two tiers. One of them is the spiritual part of, of religion, of course, is one, but there's also the uh, daily mechanics, the, the organization, the bureaucracy, which pretty much has been very orthodox, you know, uh, uh, where you have um, a lot of favoritism that's been coming out in the news that... Uh, the former um, uh, president of the um, 
Vatican Bank was was pretty much centered and and concerned about uh, pretty much Italy and its its, its friends and but you know well I didn't think that uh, I don't mean to interrupt you but I didn't think the scan- what I read about the the recent Vatican yeah. banking scandals yeah. weren't too extraordinary I just thought this is a function if you get a lot of money in and it has to either be invested yeah. or lent or borrowed there's going to be conflicts of interests there are going to be ethical issues. For example, I think that allegedly the Vatican Bank owed shares in a company, and that company owe, uh, printed pornography, and then that became an issue. So there's all these ethical issues in, involved in investment, etc. And how do you keep clean how do you when keep you have clean? all these, you know, people borrowing money, lending money, making money, trying to get interest on your money? I mean, even even investors in the United States have come up with the issue of we want to invest in a mutual fund that's very ethical. You know, there are such mutual funds or some mutual funds that are endorse certain political viewpoints. You know, your point, how do you keep clean? You know, it's uh, daily troubleshooting. You know, uh, that's how companies do it. And uh, you roll with the punches. And I think you know, the, the new pope mm-hmm. is, is they're rolling with the punches. I think, you know, there's a, there was a tribe. It's kind of a topic. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. There was a tribe, some indigenous tribe, where in every day before they would go out, no, I think before they came back, every day before they came back, they would like beat themselves so they wouldn't bring the evil spirits from their personal lives into the hunt. Yes, yes. The the early yeah. religions, um, you know, um, you know, people are are critical of uh, theocracies and basically. What does theocracy mean? Uh, believing God, believing a God or gods, you know, theocracy. But uh, before then, you know, we gotta you know, we look at the history of religion, as you were pointing out, with uh, the early tribes. You know, before religion as we know it today, people believed there were forces in nature, and I think the uh, hunters, the um, you know, like as you pointed out, uh, when they would venture into a risky, uh, if they would, you know, like like you had people that, that were out in the ocean fishing, they would travel, you know, a f- yeah, hundred and I miles. Think they did it, and, by the way, I want to correct that. I think they did it coming back and forth, going yeah. to the hunt and then coming back to the hunt. I'm the sure that if you're going to go two, three hundred miles somewhere in the middle of the ocean, I'm sure the insecurity level is very high. Wait. Religion... Uh, 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 played that role, and and we're starting to see that in Latin America, where you have the uh, developing countries like Africa, uh, now Asia. They're looking at Asia. They're looking at this Pope that he's he'll be able to reach a a, a larger international audience, and they'll be able to sympathize with him. I don't know if he, I I think uh, just to correct you a little bit, I have I've been looking very closely at uh, they call him Pope Francis. But he doesn't use a number. He's one of the first. Well, I heard, I'd seen that he hadn't used. I, the first. I think they have to, Yeah, go ahead. I don't know. I don't know if the first one has to use a number or he's numbered after. After the 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 second one comes up, so I don't know the answer. I have heard him referred to as Pope Francis the uh, first. But but that's a small point. But I wanted to return to the indigenous thing. Yeah. Uh, and another. Th- person yes. i wanted to talk to about is, is the death of hugo chavez yeah. who stated i was watching one of his speeches i'd never seen yeah. one of his speeches yeah. but during his death he stated that if you go to the tribes of um in the mountains of venezuela they're still socialists yes and well, i don't know if that's true and i i don't know if that's true i don't know but, well, but, but that, that was that was interesting um, that he said said that, and I thought it was maybe l- related to the fact that we have this Pope now who obviously spent much of his life. Well, in, uh, Latin America is a developing Argentina. country, and, you, and, and it is related, uh, both Hugo and, and the new Pope, because uh, Argentina... Do you know, do you know, do you know who? Uh, yeah. You, you talk like you know him. You, both, you said you, both. You go like you know him. Do you know Mr. Chavez? Yeah. Well, I, uh, I keep up with him. I've been keeping up with for the. the years? Uh, well, over some of the, but basically, there's two in Latin America. Mark, I look at uh, there's two extremes. Um, you have the super wealthy, uh, like in Argentina, mm-hmm. you have some of the wealthiest family. Then you have your your other extreme, the uh, the socialist. And you can yeah, and go that's ahead. what they're and the very poor, right? 
I thought you were going to say the very rich and the very poor. Well, I'm saying political movements. I'm trying to say to the the two powers that pretty much uh, are mm-hmm. added all the time in government. They're either extreme left, whether you travel to El Salvador or you travel to uh, Argentina or El Tierra del Fuego, or you have your uh, <laughs> your uh, the right. Of course, I mean um, um, you, you started military to, dictatorships. Yes, yes, yeah, or, coups, or extreme left. The coups, like I said, in Argentina, mm-hmm. we had one of the most brutal during the uh, mid nineteen seventies to the uh, mid eighties. I think it was. But um, we're, we're turning to we come back to maybe to Mr. Chavez in, in a minute because they're they're kind of interrelated in some respects. So, do you believe that, have you formed an opinion regarding whether or not it was true that uh, Pope Benedict resigned because of health problems? I think that um, um, uh, the, uh, scandals were, good, were brewing, uh, that's what I hear in media, and, and um, it, it, there was a lot of negativity that was going to explode uh, about the church. Um, one is the, um, of course, the uh, pedophile scandals. They've been going on for forty years, by the way, or so. You know, it's uh, they've been there. The church has been um, settling out of court. Um, you know, here in the local area, we have the uh, Kennedy Ranch, uh, King Ranch. Uh, they have uh, uh, the Kennedy Trust, and I think they're um, uh, located here in Corpus Christi, their main office, and. You know, we have some of that that Kennedy Foundation those trust being used to uh, settle a lot of the um, people don't know that the uh, church here in Corpus Christi is one of probably one of the richest churches in in in, in, in the world. You know, the um, the the Kennedy Foundation, the Kennedy Trust. Uh, you're talking about millions and millions of money. You're talking about by by. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, which was run by former uh, General uh, Cisneros, you know, by the way, and uh, who, who's <laughs> done a good job, you know. And uh, but um, everything costs money, you know. And nowadays, uh, where where society is more transparent. But um, <coughs> going back to Latin America, and, and I think there's two extremes. We're starting to see the extreme left, which was represented by Hugo Chavez. I think Hugo Chavez was the new. Um, um, uh, Cuba's um, uh, Fidel Castro, you know, he, uh, and I think pretty much Fidel Castro because he's uh, apparently uh, Fidel's brother Raúl in in Cuba was well, was 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 too, was too legalistic, too administrative. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hugo Chavez was more. Um, well, Hugo Chavez was considered himself a friend of Castro, right? Yeah, yes, of course. But but, they, but, but the interesting thing I found allies. about Hugo Chavez, unlike many socialists or communists. It was pretty much a bloodless takeover. There wasn't these mass murders that you often find or slaughters or military take, right? Well, what it's happened that the masses of the people rebelled against the elite structures. Elite structures that were uh, all kinds of diseases were, were, were not now with, you know, here you have Hugo Chavez pumping money, you know, more doctors, more money, more, more, uh, uh, in a way, socialism in certain areas uh, or social democratic uh, mm-hmm. areas, um, the social democratic movement, I think they call themselves, and uh, uh, have uh, done a lot for the poor. Well, I have had I, more statistically, compassion. And, statistically, do you know whether or not Hugo Chavez did reduce the rate of malnutrition and poverty? Yes, et cetera? Yes. It, also, it, you see in, in economics. He did improve health care also. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. Those, yeah, of course, true. Fidel Castro did that. You know, in Cuba, before Fidel, people forget that uh, there were some diseases that were you know, already outmoded throughout the world. But in uh, when Fidel came in, he provided an education for everybody. There's certain uh, benefits. Now, Fidel, though, um, uh, Hugo Chavez could make the argument, and I, I think it's probably true, because this is monitored by the United Nations, etc., Chavez yeah. can make the argument, I'm elected, and I'm elected every, whatever it was, every two to four years. Fidel yeah. can't make that argument, right? Or, or can he? Yeah, I guess they have some sort of elections. Well, you know, sometimes in, um, in making transitions, uh, to so, imagine Fidel Castro coming in, you had Bautista's government, which was bankrolled by the U.S., and then, you know, that happens in Latin America. There are some is one or the other European countries. And they bankroll some of these dictators because of the uh, the benefits they get and, and the wheeling and yeah, dealing. Well, you know, but what happens is that um, uh, 
uh, how do you adjust the people overnight to a whole new system and view of the universe like uh, like socialism? And I think uh, uh, Castro, the way he explained it was sometimes you need to keep a certain structure in place for a certain amount of time so people can even comprehend it and understand it. And I think that's why Castro, I think, remained in office without uh, going into early elections early on. I think uh, uh, Hugo Chavez was more of a, the people were fed up. They wanted uh, somebody that was... Uh, pretty much an image a mover and a shaker for for their needs and their were issues you were you surprised by the uh, hatred or the vitriol uh, about against hugo chavez including up to the point of his obituaries in, in the united states well the and why, why why is that well the thing is that in if you travel into latin america for instance where we got a new pope now and um, we'll make reference to him uh, pope francis uh, the first jesuit priest by the way uh um, can, people, they're, they're the criticism of, um, of, there, has of been, uh, there has been some disappointment in the Jesuit order the last 20 years you know that well well, it's been divided in Latin America it's been divided in, into two factions pretty much those that serve and work with the elite remember it's a few families that pretty much govern all the money in, in Latin American countries especially Argentina and you had um, uh, this you know Pope Francis um, uh, his his full name, I think, is Jorge uh, Mario. I think the New York Times called him Maria, but his name yes. is Jorge Mario. Jorge Mario Mar Bergoglio. Bergoglio. You know, when I first heard that he was the Pope, that's the first thing I said. Well, that's an Italian name. There's a ton of Italians in Argentina. Yeah. Well, his but, native tongue is is, is Italian. But, he, but, his parents but, were uh, immigrants from, they, they from were, Italy. They were immigrants, yeah. so apparently they're still immigrating into Argentina. But I don't know where the... Oh, is that his real name, Jorge, or is that an Angli is that a Spanishized version of Giovanni or something? I wonder. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is because his parents were uh, were uh, recent immigrants. His you, you in fact, you know how you can tell because when he uh, when when he uh, the, when when uh, the Pope spoke to the people, he was he was ex extremely fluent in in, in, in Italian. Yeah, he was. Uh, That's how he uh, You can tell it was the his his language of orientation at home. So um, I, I he see. just moved the masses with uh, his brilliant fluency and. Yeah, go ahead, Mark. No, no, that, that, that's all right. Um, the, so we had a number of, what would you call them, maybe Northern European popes. Uh, I think I just looked it up on the Internet. Pope John Paul was the... Um, yes, Pope John Paul II. Was from 1978 to 2005, and then Pope Benedict through 13. So that's quite a few years, 37, 38 years. Yes. Well, John and, Paul um, II, when he traveled to Argentina... Uh, I think there was some criticism um, because you have here this elite. Fa Remember that there was this junta during the uh, the mid seventies to the mid eighties. I think in Argentina it was very brutal. They call it. There was also an ideological war among the Jesuits. Another called the uh, the Dirty War, and uh, the criticism of John Paul when he when he arrived in Argentina, the masses of the people. They had this palace for the, uh, you know, the cardinals down there have the, live in a palace. They don't live in a regular apartment. And uh, John Paul II, you know, reopened the palace and uh, uh, was was uh, socializing and orbiting with all these elite structures. And, and the criticism of the masses was, you know, I thought you were the pope of, of the little guy, you know, of the... Uh, but sometimes, I don't know if well, the, that, the Popes are familiar a, with the politics or not. That, that's been a bigger condemnation of Pope Benedict is that at least externally he dressed, you know, in, dressed very well and, you know, well, in a very formal manner. You know, right now you have all this fluff, the media fluff. And I wonder if it's that's why, that's, that, that's why I want, you know, I, I, I'm very spiritual. I'm Catholic, by the way. I, I want, you know, I have... Uh, a bishop in the family, uh, right. uh, um, right. you know, uh, Ramundo Peña was the, a bishop, one of <laughs> the first bishops so from uh, <laughs> from the area from Robstown. Yeah. Um, you know, I got to be very careful. But uh, you know, we used to. My mom used to make uh, caldo uh, soup every uh, Saturday, and uh, he, you know, they used to come over, and 
you know, uh, uh, the bishop, and and he pretty much uh, supported a lot of the regimes in, in Latin America, and my mom and him would get into it, and, mm -hmm. you know, and so on, the family, because, uh, and it was always the issues of the poor and, and, and the governments in power. He ended up being arrested, by the way, he traveled to Latin America, and uh, Who is well, he? Uh, we're talking about... Um, uh, I want to make uh, the sure Bishop everybody... Raimundo Peña, Raymond, oh, Bishop he, he Raimundo Peña, he, he, yeah, yeah, uh, down in Latin America, he was um, uh, in charge of one of the lar largest dioceses here in Texas, of course, Brownsville. But um, um, it, it's interesting, Latin America, you got this, this two extremes, and I think, but the new Pope, what, and, and it's a developing area. You have the death of Hugo Chavez, then you have the rise of a, uh, a pontiff that uh, is trying to associate himself with, um, uh, well, the media is, is, is saying, he, saying he drove yes, the bus, he, he, he uh, yeah, right. used to cook big, his own food. That's media angle. You know, that, right, that's the that media story. angle, but uh, you yeah. hear the masses saying, well, know. You know, um, uh, um, you know, he he named after himself after uh, Sir uh, uh, Francis of Assisi. I believe it was Francis of yeah, Assisi. Yeah, which uh, was it? You know, he patron was, saint of animals. Yeah, he, he was uh, wasn't he actually, born to a wealthy actually, uh, merchant, and then he I just he read that before the show. Patron his, saint of animals, uh, a patron um, oh. a patron saint of Italy, one of the two, and um, born to a wealthy family, and and became very disenchanted with wealth and then uh, kind of embroiled himself in with poverty and all. So I'm sort of like Buddha, no? <laughs> the story of Buddha. Yeah, that's hey, uh, sounds um, uh, the four laws of the middle, by the way, Buddha's uh, famous laws. So uh, many stages in our lives. We all relate. You know? I, um, I think uh, we live in an environment of a global community. I think the church has been looked at. You talked about the, just to address one of your uh, issues that you brought up, you said there were some Germans, uh, 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 you know, influence in the church for a while. Well, and, and, I don't know what you would call that. Poland and Germany, you know, that's a complicated yes, issue. Yes. I mean, obviously, I don't know. I think German, I think Germany in a way, well, at any rate, whatever. The, like, they're more, they're Northern Europeans. And we had, can one construct a uh, criticism that the... Um, both Pope Benedict and uh, John Paul II yes. um, were relatively silent or did not take the bull by the horns regarding yeah. the pedophile scandals. That and was one some indication uh, yeah. that they had knowledge, yeah. that they let it go. And there is some indication, of course, because John Paul II was the traveling pope, because yeah. he spoke, that there wasn't as much management of the, of the church as we could have had and we're peeling the onion you know um uh, we gotta separate first of all um, um i think uh, we live in an age of transparency uh uh we don't live in the age of medieval times and um of course um um the age of the inquisition anymore but uh and i think the the, the new pope's gonna have to be more uh, more, <laughs> more high profile and uh but, well, I'd, okay, well, that's, but we, that's we one do. side of it. Another side of it is John Paul II, uh, great intellect, uh, amazing spiritual encyclicals, had an acting background. Really? I didn't know. That. Yeah, and, and with that acting background comes accolades. Yes. And a crowd approval. Yeah. But sometimes in life, you got to stay in your office and you got to manage it. Yes. Yeah. And you got to run it and you got to read reports. Yeah. And you got to manage people, and you got to make enemies. In Cuba, talking about the left now, uh, Fidel Castro said the same thing you're saying. Fidel Castro was the charismatic one. His <laughs> brother is more the bureaucrat, follow the book uh, type of individual. Uh, go ahead, Mark. I know, but no, 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 one, no, one thing, fine. one, no, one I mean, thing I can know. say about uh, John Paul II and Benedict is this: Let's look at the uh, hard data, only the facts. And I think, first of all, is uh, half of the Catholic community in Europe has turned Protestant. Half of the Catholic community in Europe, uh, uh, the stats, you, you see the largest communities now of Catholics are pretty much um, here in the South America. You have Brazil, which has well, uh, 130 million. Then you have uh, mm -hmm. followed by Mexico, which has... Uh, 
something close to um, um, 80, 88% percent uh, uh, Catholic that you uh, follow by the United according States. To the C, uh, yeah. According to the um, CIA reports, the uh, Venezuela is a 95% Catholic. Well, in, there's, in, a, there's in, some discussion about that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, but we're talking about uh, millions here mm-hmm. and, and, and population, and uh, and then it's mm-hmm. followed by, uh, of course, uh, one. And you know, it's significant because one third of all the uh, Catholics, it's, it's a growing community here in the in, in the United States, by the way. And uh, one third of all Catholics, of course, are Latinos. I mean, that's why it's growing. In the they're United they're States immigrating or overall. Into, well. 130 million, this is what I understand, in Brazil. Uh, Portuguese uh, uh, colonized Mm -hmm. uh, area. Then you have, Mm -hmm. followed by Mexico, which is close to uh, pretty much uh, almost 90%, but it's not 90% yet. Then you have, uh, followed by the the United States, which is... uh, uh, something like seventy percent or so, uh, and uh, one I know one third, and it's growing because of the immigration from um, from uh, from South America, you know. So, uh, but that that says a lot because here you have a pope, and and I think the future of uh, the Catholic Church is they're looking at uh, the developing countries like. Um, Asia now you now we're gonna have to have a pope that speaks Chinese maybe that uh, um, you I have don't know. Well, the I don't Philippines know. I think I understand that the Philippines well, have you know, uh, can you can you think that you're going to get the converts in China in the Eastern world that you received in the Western when the development of the Catholic Church is incorporated with incorporated with at the time of Christ Rome and then the enculturation of uh, Rome into the in, in, into the Latin communities of uh, other Latins of Spain and the French can you ever think that you're going to get that kind of inroads when in the when in uh, the Catholic Church is, is integrated in many respects in, in, in within the Latin cultures or the, oh, yeah. or the, the, the Romance languages I, I, don't think, I, I don't think it's. Going to I, I think uh, it's the uh, the initial part of the uh, church and uh, um, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to go back into uh, Roman history, you know, Constantine and them, but uh, I think the, the the Latin language was very simple to learn. It was uh, one of the main languages of of, uh, of propaganda and in enculturation and enculturation in several countries. <coughs> Uh, look how effective they were in the Philippines, you know, when the, the Spaniards came in and well, the Catholics. You that, got that, like 90 percent Catholic. Though? That was at the same time all the other yes, Latin America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what, what happens well, is, well, it started with the Portuguese the, the Spaniards exploring. Not gonna go over to, they're not going to go over to China now and intermarry with the Chinese and incorporate, you know. No, no, but, but what China I'm saying the is they, they provided the, they, they provided the uh, foundation. For uh, uh, you know, for uh, r- the written word is very powerful, and I think that that's something the church provided uh, uh, was was, well, so was they, they spread. La- if, if you travel to uh, to the Philippines, you'll be surprised how many Asians, uh, as a result of the church, speak Latin. How many speak uh, Spanish? How many speak uh, Italian? How many? Um, it's just incredible. In fact, their whole, uh, how do you, uh, you know, their language is, is probably half uh, Latin by now in, in, in the Philippines. Tagal, uh, uh, Tagali or yeah, yeah, half of it, uh, like uno, dos, tres, that we said, they got Spanish. very similar mm-hmm. words. Uh, I was very surprised. Um, but the church has been, um, has had a department, a pretty much a, a Back then they called it el, el Centro de Propaganda, the Center of Propaganda. Now we call it marketing, of course. But the, the, the church, um, okay. the early history, I think, in Spain, to understand uh, uh, Latin America, especially right now where, where the Pope comes from, the uh, military and the church worked um, very closely in establishing, um, 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 uh, you know, um, the new colonial communities, you know, uh, uh, the early history had a uh, theocracies uh, where the church was, uh, you know, church officials were like governors. Uh, you had, uh, if you travel to Latin America right now, you know, we're we're in the United States. It's hard to understand 
traveling into a new environment. No, it's, not as hard, it's not as hard in Corpus Christi yeah. or in Harlingen no. or in McAllen to understand the United States of America as part of the Americas. Yeah. No. It's harder <laughs> it's harder if you go to certain parts of Minnesota, you know, et cetera. But well, if you, you know, travel, and, and let's say if somebody your- from South Texas travels to Argentina, you know, or, or the Philippines, where the Catholic community is very strong. Philippines don't allow divorce, you know, don't allow, um, now they're starting, there's a eugenics movement now in Latin America and the Philippines. Those two movements within the church are fighting with each <laughs> other. The eugenics movement, of course, uh, promotes birth control and abortion and all that stuff, but basically it's hard to understand because you, you go in there basically the laws are barely changed you know there were a, there was a big scandal there where one of the american girls had medical complications she was losing her babies <coughs> in, in the uh, mm-hmm. in argentina and she, she you know they didn't want to provide a they didn't want to abort the baby you know uh, so different laws a different view of the world um, I think uh, the new pope that uh, that we have, uh, Francis, and uh, uh, they're trying to compare him to some Francis of Assisi, is the death of Hugo Chavez, um, um, and of course I'm talking about the um, not the spiritual part of the church, but the adjustment of the uh, the spin doctors, the uh, the marketing, the media that they're putting out is. Um, you know, here we have a man that's very compassionate with the poor. Yet if you look at his real world, not, you know, they're trying to create some type of, uh, of a folk image for the masses to identify well, at least with. the American media. But is. he pretty much orbited the world of, any, of elite families. You, you have to realize anybody that rises in, 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 in Latin America, and he was... Um, an arch enemy of uh, of social theocracy. In fact, well, he was, he was accused was, during mm-hmm. a trial. Remember, any high ranking Catholic official in remember Mexico for a long time. Let me go travel into Mexico. You couldn't be any other religion. You had to be Catholic. This, so in in Argentina, yeah, it, but it then was, the, the Catholic Church has also you been travel, out you, you travel to Brazil, the same thing. You travel to uh, to Argentina. And it's barely changing. You're you're starting to see that the uh, uh, the history of Argentina has that that infamous uh, uh, dirty war that the regime during the the, the mid um, oh yes nineteen seventy five some of the Argentinian newspapers and, uh, the from seventy three to seventy nine yeah the um, current the was. current the current uh, Argentina's brutal seventy six to eighty three the military, current pope was involved seventy six to eighty three yeah. military yeah. dictatorship and that's where some people believe that our the current pope what what was he well uh, there was stealing babies there were there were killing anybody who was a liberal mm-hmm. a social democrat anybody that was doing uh, advocating for the extreme poor in in the slum areas of uh, in fact two of his uh, roommates uh, I, I understand were uh, picked up by the government tortured uh, one of them had two his whose roommates uh, we're talking about the current Pope uh, two Jesuit uh, priests uh, that went out in the slums, uh, um, accused of uh, of supporting uh, social, uh, how do they call it, um, uh, uh, theocracy yeah, to, uh, what, what for social it? change, religion for social change, liberation theology. Yeah, yeah, liberation theology yeah. has different names. And then uh, I have, you know, they were tortured, and uh, they asked uh, Pope. Uh, well, for, back then. Bergoglio, who was the head of the Jesuit order, yeah, they asked him to testify in court. Protections from two liberal Jesuit priests. This is what somebody who wrote a book called *The Silence* said, paving the way yeah. for their abduction. He refused to to talk in, in their favor, and here you have uh, 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 because he disagreed ideologically with them. The other thing is in in Latin America. Course, no, 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 wait, remember, Bergo- he, yeah, yes, but Bergoglio but, is yeah, not yeah, required. He, saw this, he called the allegations against him slanderous. Yes. He claims, on the contrary, that he moved behind the scenes to save the lives of the two priests and others that he secretly hid from the death squads. And he was a good friend of the judge, by the way. Anyway, um, 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 counsel for the judge. The thing is, in Latin America, no high-ranking religious official that's Catholic is required to testify in court. Did you know that? 
whether it's a murder case, whether it's any, so they're say, not required. No That's why I'm telling no somebody from South Texas or anybody in the United States can't comprehend the current. You know, we criticize countries like Islam. They, we have Islamic law, and we ha and then they have their their secular constitution. Mm. If you travel to some of those countries, it's the very same thing. They have their constitution, and then they and then they have the uh, the you know their their, their uh, uh, church uh, policies, and one of them is that uh, any bishop, uh, any cardinal, any uh, doesn't have to testify in a court of law. And uh, he's done it several times. They were stealing babies. Several families have. Uh, Awful. I mean, Argentina has a terrible, uh, bloody, uh, um, um, you know, callous, insensitive uh, history. And remember, the the current pope or any church official, they're not to blame. They lived in a structure where the system was totalitarianism, where the structure was a coup. Well, that took and, over and that's in the, the 70s. It, it, it's similar to the it's similar to the complaints about the. Uh, obviously the popes during World War II. Yeah. And you could read about this stuff until you're blue in the face. And the truth of the matter is, is you're a church, you're in a war, you're yeah. in a war area. Um, um, obviously, you know, there's, what did the church do? And then I've always said, well, what, what did the American Jewish people did? What did they do? What did, what did you know, you could, you could go back and forth on this issue um, Regarding what anybody was capable of doing, and it's a say, you know, and once you're involved in politics, yes. it's kind of like we were saying when we began the show about staying clean. You've got to live in the whatever yeah. social cultural contents context that exists. Is it clean to yeah. be a to be a doctor and to uh, make, make obscene amounts of money through um, Medicare for collecting government money? And then, um, you know, what, what is that about? Is that right? I, I mean, it, 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 you know, there, there are so many things. My father used to say, and he was an immigrant from uh, Mexico, got here when he was 14. Uh, he used to have a saying, uh, al pueblo donde iredes, hacele como puedes. To the, in the town you have arrived, do what you must to survive, you know? I mean... <laughs> well, it's always... Uh, <laughs> It's always, you know. I used to tell that. How am I? <laughs> how far do you go? <laughs> it's, uh, there's always well, a yeah, of course, of How course. far do you go? The, I uh, met was making fun of myself with my office staff yeah. because somebody came from one of these local channels, TV channels that I advertise on. Yeah. And they said, "Well, we'd like you to cut an ad, you know, promoting this channel." And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> "Well, I get free advertising if I cut an ad promoting." <laughs> But then I'm thinking, I don't know. That's pretty low, you know. Uh, what's next, you know? Uh, I, you know. You, so you have all these judgment calls, and and that includes your practice, whatever. Like yes. say a a a, a practice. Yeah. Um, how far does the uh, criminal defense lawyer uh, go? Uh, some of I think most criminal defense lawyers, by the way, are very very ethical compared to the civil lawyers I've seen, okay. and that's based on 27 years of experience, and. You know, because I do I have a question for you, Mark. Yes. I've always been curious about, uh, yeah, I know you're into criminal law. and, and, and you, When you have a client, when do, when do you have the largest level of anxiety? When when you know he's guilty or, or when he's innocent? Well, that's kind of off point. I mean, I mean uh, that's how do you look point. at it? You usually will know right away if they're uh, guilty because they've usually confessed yeah. Or the fact circumstances are going to indicate that they that they are in fact guilty, you know. So and then somebody that's innocent would, uh, you know, you're more concerned. You're pretty about, much going to yeah. know, even though you don't you don't want to ask them. They'll tell you anyway, or there's a confession, or the fact circumstances will indicate to you, you know, yeah. no matter what they are. But so we have um, we were talking about, of course, um, actually, what was interesting too, we had a, a presidential election recently. Yes. And the presidential election might be analogized a little bit to some of these things you're saying about Latin America, wherein we've had an ever-increasing gap the last 40 years that I think is pretty uh, based upon objective facts between a gap between the richer and poor. The disparity is getting greater, much like in yeah. South America. And um, some people argue that the turning point came when 
it has been discussed that the turning point came when uh, Romney was photographed saying that he's not going to get 47 percent of the votes because they get welfare, because they get food stamps, inferredly they don't want to work, uh, they're lazy, that's 47 percent of the people, which by the way is absolutely not true. But, but it indicated an attitude that I think a lot of people resented a great deal. Yes, I think that that, that was a major variable. Uh, exactly. I think you hit the nail on the head, Mark. Um, I think you're pretty much uh, in, in pulse with uh, what a lot of uh, experts are saying, that uh, the economy was a major uh, factor this election. It, it was sort of like the war was it, uh, when it was on full blast, that people realized that the... You had this huge corporations benefited. Um, now you're starting to see that um, the economy is pretty tough. Uh, people that were never, we're starting to see people from all walks of life that had never uh, been in uh, asking for social assistance, you know, to humble themselves, to feed their family. And uh, some of the very critics that were, very ins- now they're but, starting but, but to. But what understand- was so offensive? Excuse me for interrupting you. But what was so offensive about about uh, Governor Romney's statement was that he <laughs> he was including people who got Social Security retirement. And they paid yeah. into Social Security retirement, Social Security disability, yeah. and they paid in. That's like now. an insurance plan that you pay for. Yeah. He was including veterans. He was including he was including all these people. That some of them who work, some of them who who receive government benefits, they paid yeah. for some of them. He was. You got to remember you know, that the like more, they're all bums, or the, you know, well, that was more, that just simply wasn't you you know, travel, was ridiculous. If you travel to the extreme left, I guess you have fanatics. But if, when you travel to the extreme right, you also have fanatics. Um, so the spectrum is somewhere in the middle uh, where people would. Uh, um, uh, see reality for for what it is, and I think the more you move to the to the right, as uh, Romney pointed out, is as uh, you st- you start to define public libraries, for instance, as extreme socialism. You start to define, and that has um, been what's been going on in the and, right. Uh, well, what I say is, but is how can the, the next how- thing you'll know, they'll be saying the roads are an entitlement. Well, I mean, what, what's next? Well, the the oh, the, he's the, right. He's the, got the entitled. parks. He's got that, a jury trial will be considered an entitlement. You know, I heard. How far can this go? That that you know, city parks are are extreme socialism. You know, you, you, I mean, <laughs> but how can a democracy function if the founding fathers clearly in the Constitution pointed out that? Uh, in order for democracy to work, the electorate has to be educated. And, and uh, you know, uh, here so you say Romney. Public he, education, that's the next onslaught. Is it public education is an entitlement? And, 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 you know, well, well, why do people vote? Sometimes it's vested interest. I mean, uh, in Robstown, for instance, I think, uh, I think, I think the teachers will indi- get out I and vote. There's studies that indicate that's why people <laughs> vote for their pocketbook. Yes. I think there's some studies. In well, there, there's a lot of that, especially when uh, they know that things might not go their way. But in Latin America, for instance, um, they say that uh, you have p- places like Argentina that are 90% Catholic or close to 90%. The thing is, what is so the church attendance? Ask what is the church att- yes. Did you know it's 10% or less of Catholics attend church in uh in Argentina. Well, I won't say how you many know Catholics why? are in this room and how many how many Catholics are in this room and how many attend church. <laughs> I think maybe, I think maybe just I said, according to the, from what I know from the two people, other two people in this room, from, uh, I think only 33 and a third of the, the people yeah. in this room out of 100%. Well, I'm very spiritual, Mark. I, I and, and, you know, I, I'm the type of person that's also a realist, pragmatic, you know, what a but pragmatism. That, let, me I, let me say something about that spiritualism stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's like a '60s thing. It is. It? it is, but and it's. I gotta, I gotta tell you. I. I mean, I hate to say this because this is strictly a personal opinion. I. I kind of think that's kind of a. Immature, juvenile thing, uh, in a way. But I, I it, hate to say remember, that. remember that. Uh, but in a way, I mean, I, you yeah. you have to step you, aside. You should go that stage when you're about eighteen you, to twenty four. You have to object. It's like for little kids. Object- Guys, I, you know that's a horrible you, thing to say. You object so many people yourself. are very good people. Yes, and and better people. There, I mean, there's some very good people. I've known some great atheists. Yeah, you know, I have. You know. I forgive you, Mark. 
<laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hey, yeah, uh, but uh, you have Are to. You a uh, priest? I think Are you a that priest? I think that the '60s uh, view of objectifying yourself from any authority structure and look at it in a human form uh, gave you a special well, here's insight. Here's what I got to say. Here's what I got to say. And I think it does. The, the think, immaturity you of it was, it remember, back in the 60s, how old were we? How, were, how old were the? And they were pretty much uh, young people. Um, there were young people well, looking at the world, looking benefits. at adults. I think look, there were extreme benefits from that period. Yes. Social consciousness, okay. for example. And... Um, I'm reaching out to other people, um, um, and I think the the church may have integrated the Catholic Church. Obviously, you can go you can go into some Catholic churches today, and it looks like an old time '60s hippie folk mass or something, yes. doesn't it? So the, they were influenced, you know. And the the other issue, uh, going back to um, the identity of the Pope, you know, is is he Latin? Um, is he a Latino? You know. Uh, well, the, the, media, the media thing. says first Latino. Yeah, yeah they and, love uh, that. Always and, Latino. You know, but the well, thing is, you know, his, his parents were from Italy. Again, well, Argentina. I mean, that's like Argentina. everybody in this room. Yeah. Are, are, you're, you're an American, right? Of course. You're an yeah. American. But your ancestors came from, you were born in the United States, right? My, you know, okay, uh, right, but so my grandfather so in the Civil okay, War. Well, I guess in that way, <laughs> my great 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 grandfather. In that way, um, it's like the Mexican, the the, the Mexicans. Sometimes I rent who are born in Mexico. If they're United States citizens, are they Americans? They're United States. Yeah, well, well, that, that's what I'm saying. They're right. uh, uh, recent immigrants. Are it's an issue that um, is he that well entrenched in uh, in, well, in, you, in in the uh, cold. Clearly, you have to believe that he retains from having two Italian parents, being born in Italy. You have to, and, and then he's even kind well, of I, endorsed in the Latin well, culture. I, I, so Argentina, you have to believe that he he retains. Uh, Argentina is is a, clearly a nation of immigrants. Uh, they have a huge uh, Italian uh, community. They got a German community. They have a, a lot um, of Nazis um, in Ger Argentina. Who Nazis? Nazi by after old, World War Two, yeah. right? Yes, of course. You had Operation Paperclip that uh, uh, the church Argentina for, took. Mm -hmm. Did you know that uh, people? The United States was involved in Operation Paperclip, and yeah. arguably the Vatican was yeah. too, right? Bringing Nazis, right? Well, yeah, After but you II. know the, the the problem with Argentina is they don't recognize uh, copyright laws, for instance. Um, uh, one of the problems is that any democracy should should that respect intellectual ways. property. That goes two ways. Yes. See, you you want to patent something, so you're concerned about that, right? <laughs> but you know what one of these Caribbean islands said? Yeah. They said, okay, if you can't do internet gambling, our internet gambling in the United States, we're not going to recognize your copyright laws. So that always goes two ways. Well, Argentina is, uh, has always harbored uh, 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 people from different countries that... Um, Got in and, 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 and and well, the rich. We mostly, if we get in trouble down there, if we you're get super amnesty, wealthy, but I can, remember, if I get in trouble, I can hit down Argentina. Well, but also from those lands, you have the remarkable. Uh, uh, who was it? Uh, uh, che Guevara that emerged. Uh, um, you know, I don't know uh, what to make in, of che. In I don't know what to make of Che Guevara. Be, che became a folk hero of uh, and, 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 the and, son of a doctor, a wealthy mother. Yeah, uh, well, uh, um, had a handicap. Most people don't know, don't that. know that the, what the, kind of the army did he have? some physical handicap. The military wouldn't take him in. Um, in um, Maybe he was nuts. Well, well, he was very sharp. I mean, I heard him. Uh, have you heard his United Nations uh, talk on? Uh, no, and I, and I don't know that much about him. I, after and I that, he decided he didn't want to be a bureaucrat like, like his friend Castro, and he just left and went to the Congo. And but the you know the adventure was he killed by the CIA. Yes, he was good. Yeah, years. of course. Uh, before they killed him, they told him, "Did you know the model we're using now to, uh, uh, to you know, when we go into communities was written by you? You know, one of your manuals on, uh, on, um, on, on how to organize. You know, uh, he left it uh, written behind a German." There's a great deal of animosity in Latin America about CIA assassinations, etc., against the United States. Isn't that right? Well, throughout the years, the thing is that the uh, people need to look at the history of the CIA, and uh, it was very important. For instance, like Peru and Withrow, people don't realize that uh, we had copper wire, you know. Everything, we needed copper, you know. Uh, uh, 
uh, for our electricity, so on and so. So the interest of this country is, is it's important that uh, certain corporations stay in power so we can maintain uh, a competitive uh, uh, price in the market and, and so on and so forth. I'll so tell you this. I, a I, lot of the, I, I don't agree with your... I don't agree with your insinuations that that some of that stuff we do is justified for our own. For no, I never, I never said it was justified. I never said in any way it was but justified. I, I just, okay. But what, what what I'm saying is I'm I'm looking at the uh, vested interests sometimes of uh, of certain people that make key decisions, and I don't know if it's representative overall or. I, and sometimes we don't find out about it till later. You know the the organizational. Uh, has we different don't find tiers. out ordinarily. What do we find out? We find out this stuff fifty years later. For instance, the war, the the, the, the so many things. 50, the war 50 in years. Iraq. You know, people started looking at their. They were saying their agenda was a war against terrorism, and then who was the terrorist? Who well, was the target? And all of a very, sudden, but all they could see was Halliburton getting more contracts, right. certain people being taken care of, certain corporations going there can't be prosecuted by American laws because they're private companies torturing people once people started seeing uh, pragmatically judging things well i think by the results uh they came to a different conclusion do i want my son there you know my daughter um so that's what i'm talking about mark and then religion is the same thing I'm, i know me and you are good catholics and very spiritual uh and the um, and, and in know. that sense, um, you know, I'm, I, I, I do pray a lot. That'd be, I, it, someone, that'd be I just, someone else to say yeah, that. Yeah. I just don't try to impose it on people. And I think uh, um, uh, pretty much um, uh, Christianity, the Muslim religion, and the Jewish religions have done a lot of forceful proselytizing. And then that's something that I haven't uh, favored in history because... Well, can we superimpose a religion on a people? And I think the way it has been done historically, many a time, is not has. I think it's it's not the way we live in a in a modern world where people should make their own decisions. See, you know, and, that's you a know. Hist- that historical question about the forced proselytization by the Catholic Church. The historians, everybody has such a political agenda that you have to you. You have to dig so deep to figure out really what occurred. Well, the history. I know there was the history in Latin America because we have a new pope. That's why we're discussing uh, Latin America. Keep in mind uh, when Spain came to the Americas, the uh, the bishops, the cardinals were not appointed by the pope. At that time, they were appointed by by Queen Isabella and then and, and you know her husband and okay. in Spain. I was unaware of that. Uh, uh, you I, know, and and, and the church says, well, Ecuador was wrong. That's why all this horrible colonial cruelty. Uh, you know, they used to get everybody out. They they used to well, determine he, if you were a Christian this way in 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 Latin America. Let me tell you, Mark. What's your name? And if he was a Native American, who said, "Well, my name is Chichicotl," you know, and he would say, "From now on, you're Juan Garcia." He says, "But well, that's no, not my no, name." No, my understanding is that if the you time wouldn't, of if you wouldn't, if you wouldn't <laughs> adopt Juan Garcia, you were born, you well, were no, burned at the stake. My, my I mean, what type of Christianity? <laughs> no, I know. My understanding at the time of baptism, they gave the Spanish names. You were not a Christian if you didn't wear a suit and a tie. If you look at the early laws, Mark, they're ridiculous. If you use certain herbs, if you use... Most people don't know. know, You wonder, you see some of these... Somebody has one of these herb shops where they have the crude and data (laughs) stuff, right? Oh, right. they'll get burned at the state around for here, sure. Right? <laughs> well, they're around here in Corpus, right? No? Everywhere. Robstown, Every- right? You have one problem? Well, everybody has folk. Whoever Madison runs that. Every, every are, ethnic are they group Catholic? has... They, if you have one of those, are you Catholic? Well, the crystal... They say, I mean, you you know, know, I don't know. You you know, they. I, I was at this guy at the stable. He had a pet rock with him, and... Uh, he was saying he talks with the rock, and then and I told him... Well, well he got emotional talk issues. Back. I, 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 you know. It was a lawyer, Mark. Then well, he still, said, I don't care. He, he said, had emotional he, issues. He said, he's he, he he's said pet rock, your subconscious will to talk to... back to you. Well, he put in a Freudian sense. Uh, does can you know? Does your subconscious talk back to you? Well, he doesn't sound like Sigmund that's Freud, like a pagan thing. Freud said yes. You know, um, well, uh, psychology and religion aren't ex- exactly together. Is it? Is it an evil spirit 
or is it an emotional problem? Is it craziness, or they they need exorcism? I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Well, I mean, this is complicated stuff. But <laughs> yes, of course. Um, at some point, you got to mark your ex. You know, I mean, this okay. is my position. So you're, this is where I stand. So you're going to mark your ex. And That's you what think I'm doing that, right um, now. You know, I'm. Uh, and you think that Jorge, fire away. <laughs> and, and you think and, and we're reaching the end of the show, but. You know, we obviously have this um, situation where in Benedict, uh, Pope Benedict resigned. We have two popes, some people say. Interesting. That hasn't happened in many years. There hasn't been a resignation, right? Yes, yes. Um, 600 years or so? Yeah, more like 800, 900, I okay, think. Okay, well, uh, I, um, I read different things on it, you know. Well, these are modern times. I think... Uh, so it's going to be a job now. There's something called is a it, cultural it, lag, it, I think. I'm, I'm not much... going to be a job? I'm just joking. The what? I'm just joking. We're reaching the end of the show. But, but by the way, are you ever surprised by the amount of anti-Catholicism you see on the internet? Um, of course, Mark. You know, Shocking, I, I, isn't you it? know, it's it's you know, you know, before my my mother died, you know, uh, she told me two things. Um, I leave uh, my religion, and you know, my name. You know, I mean, uh, those two things are part of your identity. Thing. They're very dear. Yeah. All right, Homer. Homer Viral. Uh, Publisher, El Defensor, thank you for coming on, Homer. It, it was an honor, Mark, okay. and of course I was referring thank to uh, Human Affairs. Thank you. And if anybody wants to appear on this show, they could contact me by email at uh, mark at markdicarlo.com or they want to uh, answer anything that we've uh, discussed. Thank you very much. Good God knows just had to be right Well, he woke up naked with a big headache He'd been done in by a slippery snake A man and a woman get to live a while and then they die It's been that way since the get-go It's been that way since the get-go it's been that way since the get-go Oh, it's always been that way Politicians make promises that they can't keep They keep printing money till they get in way too deep It's the same old lesson they never learned they're too busy working on their next turn. Politicians keep making fools out of you and me. It's been that way since the get go. It's been that way since the get go. It's been that way since the get go. Lord, it's always been that way. Money breeds war as long as there's a man alive. Rich kids go to college and the poor kids fight. The high rollers crap out every time, rolling soldiers' bones like loaded dice. War is the beast that makes every mother cry. Been that way since the get go. It's been that way since the get go. It's been that way since the get go. Oh, it's always been that way.